It's the final group. It's Group F, the group of death. Welcome back, guys. As we tackle Group F, and what a mouth-watering group this really is. France, Portugal, Germany and Hungary. It certainly promises to be a very good watch. Don't forget to subscribe so you do not miss out on further videos. And hit the like button and comment down below who you think will win this group. And first up, we're going to talk about France. Last competitive defeat for the French was in qualifying process against Turkey almost two years today. Probably the best squad in depth. Top scorer in qualifying was Olivier Giroud. Strength, uh, so many players, you know, you only have to look at players like Laporte joining up with Spain due to not being getting any minutes with the French team. He's forced out being behind the pecking order, the likes of Kimpembe, Upamecano and Varane. Pogba and Kante, they don't lose when they're together and the world champions will be looking to provide for the class of Kingsley Coman, Griezmann, Benzema, who returns to the squad and that man whose all eyes will be on Kylian Mbappe. What a player, what a talent. Only questions you do ask is, is there too much talent there? Will some players not been happy without getting a start? Will Didier Deschamps have, the, have them under control? There's no evidence on this issue in the current form that that is a problem, but it could be one going forward. While all eyes will be on Mbappe at these uh, tour the tournament, there's one man who's done it, won it all over, is one of the greatest footballers ever. Cristiano Ronaldo won't just turn up, he's a born winner and certainly still offers a quality edge for the Portuguese this summer. When you look around their attack with Ronaldo, there's no shortness of classes there. Bernardo Silva, Diogo Jota, Oliveira, Joel Felix, Fernandes, Neves... The, the list can go on. At the back, the strength of Premier League Player of the Year, Ruben Diaz. His teammate at City, Cancelo, Guerrero, Semedo, experienced man in Pepe. All the quality is there to see for Portugal. Only runners up to qualify for this tournament behind the Ukraine and started the World Cup qualifying with seven points from nine and a recent defeat to France in the Nations League. There is a mark maybe to worry about, but are they stronger than at least two of these? I think you'd probably have to say yes. The defending champions will be looking to get off to a good start here. There's a lot of worry about the Germans going into this summer, but can you ever write them off? A 6-0 defeat to Spain in November in the Nations League and sitting third at the moment in World Cup qualification behind Armenia and North Macedonia. The latter they lost 2-1 at home to back in March. Defensively, the worry would be there pretty much a little bit like England with plenty of attacking quality with the Chelsea boys, Havertz and Werner. Then you've got on top of that Sane, Cruz, Nabry, Gundogan, Muller, Volland. So many, so many players there capable of setting up or scoring goals. They've played with a three in the warm-up games at the back, trying to tinker with the system. So it looks like Ginter Hummels and either Sule or Rudiger will be in that three. Uh, one of those wing-backs would probably be Robin Gusans, if it is, it's certainly been a good season. Good for him in the final third going forward. Goals and assists all season for Atalanta. For me, Germany will need to outscore those attacks of France and Portugal to get through this stage. That could be tough, but you definitely wouldn't write them off, would you? Now on to Hungary, probably an afterthought when you think about Group F. There's no pressure on these guys, so can they capitalise on the ignorance of everyone in this build-up? Recent wins over Turkey and a battling 3-0 draw with Poland shows that they can tussle with the good outfits. Hungary finished fourth in the group out of five to qualify for this. Going, getting through Bulgaria and Iceland in the uh, playoffs. They have experience in goal. Leipzig's Galashi in front of him is his teammate in Germany, Willy Orban, who is also top scorer for them in qualification. Midfield attacking the goal was Roland Salai, who has done well with Freiburg this season. Up front with Salai driving it to try and get the goals is Hollander up front, the partisan striker. Jonas Hahn has 22 league goals in his home league this year and the experience of Adam Zlazai also, but this is a whole new setup for the Euros and you struggle to see a way through for them uh, to get through the other three anyway. So if we look at the stats going into Group F, France have won this tournament twice, 1984 and 2000. Ironically, the next tournament they won last time in 2000 was the one after winning the World Cup. Could they do that again? Finalists in 2016, losing to Ed Ayer's extra time goal for Portugal. The side to fear here on paper this summer's tournament. Germany have won it three times, last time in 1996 
where the final was at Wembley. Could they repeat that this summer? Been in a minimum of semi-finals in the last three, so they're going to have to go some to keep up with that record. Scored more goals than anyone here in this tournament. Portugal, the defending champions, and remarkably never failed before the quarterfinals since all the way back in 1992. Ronaldo got 11 in qualification, and how would you, how the hell could you begrudge him of another goal this year? Hungary qualified in 2016 and lost 4-0 to Belgium in the round of 16. That year, they finished above Portugal in the group stage, who went on to win it, and they were also unbeaten before the Belgium game. Head-to-head, -head, they can boast more wins and defeats in history against the French. And that 2016 round of 16 was the first time they qualified since 1972. All to go for the Hungarians, but no pressure on their shoulders. So this is how I see Group F. I think France are going to win it. I think Portugal will take second. Germany third, with a potential of them becoming, you know, decent third place runners up. And Hungary bottom. I don't see how you can not put Hungary bottom looking at this on paper. But but football's not played on paper. So let us know in the comments down below if you disagree with any of those. That wraps up our Euro predictions. Cannot wait for it all to kick off. Let's have it. Come on, England. Up the footy.